Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi film called Demolition Man. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1996, parts of Los Angeles had fallen to the hands of hardened criminals who protect their racket by killing anyone who walks into their territory. Somewhere in the city, one gang had just hijacked a bus with 30 passengers because the driver dared to pass through an area under their control. The man most keen on stopping the thugs is John Spartan, who has earned the epithet the demolition man for his habit of leaving a trail of destruction when he goes after criminals. On the way to the gang's headquarters, Spartan tells Officer Zachary Lamb that he has a hunch that the gang leader is the maniac named Simon Phoenix. Upon their arrival, Spartan jumps to the top of the building and maims several thugs as Phoenix watches him from the monitors. Phoenix, enraged by Spartan's arrival, punctures several barrels of gasoline as the police officer draws closer to his location. After evading a few more goons, Spartan makes his way to the room where Phoenix awaits. He asks Phoenix where the hostages are, but he refuses to divulge their location. When Spartan threatens to shoot the Phoenix, the criminal warns Spartan that he's standing in a pool of gasoline, and he's ready to light him up. With Spartan unable to make a move, Phoenix calmly lights up a cigarette and throws it on the gas-covered floor. As the gas ignites, Spartan backs away from the fire and charges Phoenix. Spartan asks Phoenix again where he kept the bus passengers as they strike blows against each other. Phoenix, however, still refuses to tell him, so Spartan knocks him out and carries him out of the burning building. Spartan and Phoenix barely escape when the barrels start exploding. After the explosion, the police chief scolds Spartan for going after Phoenix when he wasn't even assigned to the case. When the captain asks Spartan about the hostages, he says he had done a thermal scan to search for them, but he only saw Phoenix's men. Phoenix overhears the conversation and contends that Spartan is wrong. A fireman soon informs the captain that they've found around 30 bodies in the ruins of the building. Phoenix claims that he's tried telling Spartan about the hostages, but the cop didn't care. Spartan begins to worry as the police chief advises him to contact his lawyer. Soon, Spartan is convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to spend 70 years in cryostasis. As part of the rehabilitation program, Spartan will be placed under synaptic suggestion in his frozen state. As soon as the warden, William Smithers, finishes reading the sentence, Spartan is placed in a cylindrical encasement. While the container is filled with liquid, the warden takes a canister and loads it onto the cryogenic machine. A ball of chemical is released onto Spartan's container, freezing him in an instant. 36 years later, Los Angeles is now merged with San Diego and Santa Barbara to form the megacity called San Angeles. Lt. Lenina Huxley gives Smithers a call to ask about the situation at the cryo penitentiary as she patrols the streets. The warden assures her that there is nothing to worry about because the prisoners are frozen. Huxley drives back to the station, telling Smithers that she's disappointed by the lack of activity. Down in the sewers, Edgar Friendly looks through his periscope to observe a van as it drives away after delivering food to an establishment. Friendly surmises that another van will arrive in 12 hours, noting that the movement of goods in the city has become too predictable. At the police station, Captain George Earl issues a warning to Huxley, as she seems to be longing for some crime to happen so she could get some action. When she enters her office, she whispers an expletive to describe the police chief, causing the automated machine to give her a fine of half a credit for cussing. Officer Alfredo Garcia follows the lieutenant, telling her that the encounter with the police chief was quite intense. Huxley asks Garcia if he doesn't get bored chasing after people who break curfew or other culprits who tell dirty jokes. Garcia tells her that he finds his current job profoundly fulfilling. On the other hand, Huxley is getting fed up with her current situation due to the lack of challenges on the streets. In the cryo penitentiary, the warden unfreezes Phoenix for his parole hearing. As he is briefed about the proceedings, Phoenix antagonizes the warden and suddenly utters the words, Teddy Bear, causing his shackles to unlock. Phoenix immediately attacks the guards, who are left wondering how the prisoner knew the password to the cuffs. After he kills them, Phoenix takes the warden's eye and holds it in front of the retinal scanners to open the door. As Phoenix makes his way out of the facility, the police station receives an alert for code 187 from the central computer L7. The cops don't recognize the code, so Huxley looks it up on the computer. They are soon shocked to learn that it's murder death kill, which they haven't encountered in over 16 years. They're even more horrified when L7 shows them live footage of Smithers crawling on the floor just before he dies from his severe injuries. Huxley looks up the list of prisoners scheduled for parole that day and discovers that one of them is Simon Phoenix. Huxley tries to find more information on Phoenix by looking up his access code, but Zachary Lamb says he is not coded because he was frozen before the city implanted chips in the residence. As Huxley reads about Phoenix's arrest record, L7 informs them that Phoenix has killed more people before leaving the cryo penitentiary. Huxley pinpoints the criminal's location by tracking the vehicle he stole. Phoenix soon learns that he has gained new skills when he stops by an information booth to look up Edgar Friendly. When he sees Friendly's file, he suddenly hears a voice in his head, suggesting that he should kill Friendly. Officers soon arrive at the scene while he uses the computer to find out where to acquire firearms. The police, however, have no clue how to deal with Phoenix due to their lack of experience. Phoenix activates the anti-graffiti mechanism on the wall to incapacitate a cop standing close to it. He then beats the remaining officers with his bare hands and taunts the police watching him from the security cameras at the station. 
Dr. Raymond Cocteau, the man who governs the megacity, soon receives information about the MDK incidents following Phoenix's escape. So he calls Earl and tells him to do everything in his power to apprehend the escaped felon. Huxley learns Spartan was the only one who managed to arrest Phoenix, so she suggests unfreezing Spartan to find and catch the fugitive again. Soon, they take Spartan out of cryostasis and reinstate him to the police force, despite the apprehensions of Captain Earl. After Spartan regains consciousness, he learns that his wife has died in the Great Earthquake of 2010, and his daughter's whereabouts are unknown. Huxley then informs him that Phoenix had escaped from prison that morning and had already committed 11 murders. Spartan asks for a cigarette, but Huxley tells him that it's banned because anything deemed unhealthy has been declared illegal. Spartan soon receives a fine from L7 after he spews out an expletive when he finds out that alcohol, meat, and contact sports have been banned as well. Earl tells him to get ready to find Phoenix, but Spartan refuses, arguing that he ended up being frozen when he caught the maniac 36 years ago. Earl tells Spartan that he has no choice but to arrest Phoenix again if he doesn't want to go back to cryostasis. Huxley informs Spartan that it's hard for them to track Phoenix down because he doesn't have a microchip implant on his hand. When Spartan dismisses the implant as fascist, the police chief tells him that he also has one in his hand. Earl argues that they don't need Spartan to catch Phoenix because the computer already had predicted the criminal's next moves. Spartan, however, believes that Phoenix will go somewhere he can steal firearms, which are now only found in museums. Phoenix soon finds his way to the San Angeles Museum of History, as Spartan had predicted. The fugitive heads straight for the armory after finding out its location from the kiosk. Spartan, Huxley, and Garcia go to the museum, although Huxley is still skeptical that Phoenix would succeed in grabbing the weapons because they're stored in a maximum security exhibit. Upon reaching the armory, Phoenix jumps with glee before trying to break the display with his fists. When he fails, Phoenix slams one of the museum's guards through the glass, causing it to shatter. Phoenix then grabs a shotgun and uses it to break the other displays that house more powerful weapons. Spartan and his companions approach the museum armed with a glow rod, which can only stun its target. Spartan tells the other two to wait for him outside and give him 10 minutes to arrest Phoenix. Spartan soon catches up to Phoenix, but the criminal immediately shoots at him as soon as he appears. As Spartan takes cover, he finds a shotgun on the floor and uses it to fire back at Phoenix, causing the felon to fall back to another room. As the firefight continues, Spartan notices that Phoenix is hiding behind a kiosk with a nearby lamp. So Spartan shoots the lamp, making it fall through the glass floor. Phoenix falls to an exhibit of downtown Los Angeles that was preserved after the quake rocked the city in 2010. Phoenix soon gets up and shoots back at Spartan, causing him to fall to the same area. Phoenix tries a powerful laser gun called the AC Mag on Spartan, but the cop manages to dodge it. Phoenix loses his weapon, so he proceeds to beat Spartan up with his martial arts skills. Spartan swings an old TV at Phoenix to knock him down. He then uses the glow rod to electrocute the felon while he's standing on a puddle. Phoenix manages to grab hold of the AC mag again and shoots it at Spartan, causing the cop to take cover. Phoenix runs out of the museum and comes across Cocteau and his assistant Bob. The felon tries to shoot Cocteau, but he can't seem to pull the trigger. Cocteau asks Phoenix about the thought repeating in his brain, ordering him to kill Friendly. Cocteau reiterates the command to Phoenix, but their impromptu meeting is soon interrupted when Spartan catches up. After Phoenix leaves, Cocteau thanks Spartan for saving his life and invites him to dinner. At the restaurant, Cocteau brags to Spartan how he restored order to the megacity when there was nothing but chaos and destruction. Spartan tells him that he'd rather live elsewhere due to the strict rules in San Angeles. Cocteau argues Spartan would have been executed for his crimes, so he should be grateful that they opted to put him in cryostasis instead. Spartan, however, tells them that his frozen state was no picnic because he had nightmares about the people burning in Phoenix's headquarters. During their meal, Spartan suddenly sees suspicious men outside the restaurant, so he goes after them. Friendly and his gang soon emerge from the sewers to rob the van delivering food to the restaurant. Spartan takes down several members of the gang, so Friendly sends more people after him. When Spartan sees the mob chasing after him, he cuts down the rope of a tent, causing the canvas to fall on his pursuers. While the spectators cheer for Spartan, Friendly and a few of his people retreat into the sewers with some food. Spartan grabs one of the men to attack him, but he stops when he finds out that they were stealing food. Cocteau explains that those people were known as scraps, who had chosen to dwell under the sewers and abandoned tunnels instead of living in comfort in the megacity. Bob informs Spartan that the scraps are the last remaining criminal element in the city, and plans are already underway to get rid of them. When Cocteau and Bob arrive at their office, they find Phoenix waiting for them. Phoenix tells Cocteau that he is happy with the new skills and knowledge he acquired during his frozen state. Cocteau reminds him that those skills were given to him so he could kill Friendly. Phoenix tells him that he needs more men to execute his mission, so he provides Cocteau with a list of criminals he wants to set free from the cryopenitentiary. Huxley takes Spartan back to her apartment filled with 20th century memorabilia. Huxley tells him that she was aroused when she watched him fight the scraps earlier, so she invites him to have intercourse with her. Spartan is perplexed by the offer, but he agrees. Huxley goes to another room and comes back with two virtual reality helmets. After putting on the device, she tells him that they can begin to make love. As soon as Spartan closes his eyes, he sees himself being intimate with Huxley, but he soon becomes frustrated by the lack of physical contact, so he breaks it off. 
He tells Huxley that he wants to do it the old-fashioned way, but the idea grosses her out. She tells him that kissing and other fluid transfer activities have been outlawed because of the diseases that they caused. Spartan tries to kiss Huxley, but she tells him to leave her apartment. Spartan goes to his apartment and loads a disc that Huxley gave to him earlier. The disc contains security footage showing Cocteau being approached by Phoenix after the criminal raided the museum. Spartan sees that Cocteau did not seem afraid of Phoenix even when the criminal pointed the gun at him. The following day, Spartan apologizes to Huxley by giving her a sweater he knitted the previous night. Spartan wonders how he had the knowledge to knit, so Huxley tells him that the ability and desire were implanted on him as part of his rehabilitation. When they check Phoenix's rehab scheme, they're surprised to find out that he had been programmed to become a more efficient killer. Huxley tells Spartan that Cocteau Industries developed the program, so he decides to stop by Cocteau's office to confront him about Phoenix. When Spartan reaches the video conference room, Cocteau apologizes through the monitors that he can't be present physically because he's dealing with important matters. Spartan voices out his suspicions that Cocteau had something to do with Phoenix's escape. Cocteau deflects from the issue by suggesting that Spartan, not Phoenix, probably destroy the museum. After shooting down the monitors, Spartan manages to get to Cocteau's office and point a gun to his head, warning him that he wouldn't be able to control Phoenix. Cocteau orders Huxley to return Spartan to cryostasis because he is the one who is out of control. Instead of going back to the prison, Spartan asks Huxley and Garcia to help him find Phoenix below the sewers. He argues that they couldn't find the fugitive because they don't monitor the sewers, and cops are afraid to go there. Down in the sewers, the trio soon comes across Friendly while they're gawking at the beauty of a 1970 model Oldsmobile. They tell Friendly that they are not after him, but they warn him that Cocteau wants him dead. Meanwhile, Phoenix briefs the gang of men and women who were just freed from the cryo penitentiary. He tells them that they'll soon be running the city when they kill Cocteau. As a bonus, they also get to kill Spartan, who had put most of them under cryostasis. Phoenix and his gang soon come across Spartan and Friendly while scouring the sewers. The goons start shooting at the cops, prompting them to run for cover. Phoenix sees Spartan hiding as he protects a civilian, so he aims his AC mag at the cop. But before he could shoot, Friendly sees him and fires at the footpath where Phoenix is standing, causing the outlaw to fall to the ground. Failing to kill Spartan, Phoenix escapes to the surface and drives away in Huxley's car. Huxley and Spartan chase after Phoenix using the Oldsmobile from the sewers. As they get close to Phoenix, Spartan shoots down the vehicle's wheels, but Phoenix activates the auto inflate. Spartan tells Huxley to take the steering wheel and jumps onto Phoenix's car. Phoenix engages the auto drive and tries to push Spartan off the vehicle. As they struggle, Phoenix tells Spartan that he had already killed the bus passengers he had taken as hostages in 1996 before the building blew up. As Spartan hangs from the vehicle, Phoenix punches him several times, but he hangs on and throws Phoenix out of the car. Spartan tries to stop the vehicle, but the computer fails to follow his instruction. He manages to turn off the autopilot, but the car won't break. After the car hits a glass display outside a building, it starts filling up with foam to protect Spartan. Huxley arrives at the scene and helps Spartan out of the vehicle. Phoenix pays another visit to Cocteau, who is delighted that the destruction caused by Phoenix has left the people terrified. He tells Phoenix that he now has the mandate to create a perfect society. Phoenix tries to kill Cocteau again, but he's still unable to pull the trigger. In frustration, he orders one of his men to shoot Cocteau and throw his body into the fireplace. Phoenix sees Sparta and Huxley arrive at Cocteau Industries through the security cam, sending two of his men to attack them. After dealing with the two gang members, Huxley and Spartan find out that Cocteau has been killed. They also learn that Phoenix intends to unfreeze more criminals, so they immediately prepare to follow him to the cryo penitentiary. However, Spartan stuns Huxley with a glow rod so he could deal with Phoenix on his own. At the prison complex, Phoenix is starting to unfreeze the criminals with Bob's help. After learning that the process is already in the final stages, he kills the remaining personnel at the facility. Spartan soon arrives and engages Phoenix in a shootout. While hiding from Spartan, Phoenix takes control of a large mechanical claw and moves it towards Spartan to grab him. As Spartan hangs from the crane, Phoenix toys with him by moving the claw around as he shoots Spartan. Phoenix soon hits a pipe on the claw, causing the freezing agent to leak out. Spartan then grabs the leaking pipe and directs it to the crane so he could smash it after it freezes. After Spartan breaks free, Phoenix fires a laser gun at him, but it soon runs out of energy. Phoenix engages Spartan in hand-to-hand -hand combat and gains the upper hand due to his acquired skills during cryostasis. Spartan fights back and manages to knock him down once, but Phoenix quickly recovers and sweep kicks him to the ground. Phoenix tries to drop a barrel on Spartan, but he dodges it and grabs a vial of the cryogenic chemical on the ground. As Phoenix approaches to attack him, Spartan breaks the vial to release the chemical and freeze Phoenix. Spartan grabs onto a moving crane to avoid getting frozen. When the crane reaches Phoenix, he kicks his head off, causing it to fall to the ground and shatter. Spartan runs out of the prison as the uncontrolled freezing triggers a series of explosions throughout the facility. Outside, Spartan informs Earl that Phoenix is dead and the cryo prison is no longer functional. Earl worries that they won't be able to keep peace and order in the megacity after Cocteau's death, but Spartan assures them that they'll figure it out somehow. Huxley sarcastically tells Spartan that she appreciates being knocked out to keep her safe. When she complains that they're supposed to work together, Spartan agrees and kisses her. 
After breaking off the kiss, Huxley hears that other fluid transfer activities feel even better, so she kisses Spartan again. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.